y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the Spirit and the truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and Singing you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, old folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and singing. All of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. We had read into our hearings uh, from the book of Psalms, the chapter is 1, uh, verse 1 through 6, in, in particular the chapter, but uh, verse number 1 is where I want to take my lesson uh, from this morning. If you have your Bibles, if you just say amen when you're at Psalms chapter 1, verse number 1, we begin to receive God's word to the God who doeth all things well. Somebody say he can do he can do anything but but fail. I don't think he can fail. And so we just thank Brother Harper uh, for blessing us, uh, Brother Anthony for blessing us in praise and worship, uh, and, and all up until this very hour. Your participation, as Brother Harper said, uh, sound like y'all came to praise God this morning. Amen. 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 Nobody mad but the devil. Amen. The devil's so mad right now he's rolling his eyes. Amen. We're gonna see if we can't make him roll him some more. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to talk to you about blessed is the unstuck. Blessed is the unstuck. And the preacher said, where do you see that? I see that in the book of Psalms in verse number one. Because the verse, uh, the introduction piece of the book of Psalms prepares the reader to uh, uh, have a deeper relationship with God than his external circumstances. Uh, it Psalms from chapter 1 with over 13 different authors. David didn't write all the Psalms. The Psalms of Korah. Asaph wrote Psalms. Uh, Solomon has some Psalms. They're, they're not all contribute to David, but they all contribute to, uh, in some cases, dire circumstances mm -hmm. in which the Psalms would cry out to God in the midst of their trial. Have you ever been through some trials in your life in which the enemy wanted to take away your voice? Amen. Take away your prayer. Uh -huh. Take away your hope and your victory. Yes. The psalmist exclaims praise in the face of persecution. He exclaims prosperity in the face of problems. The psalmist starts the chapter, the book off, with the way of the righteous. Uh -huh. And that those that are in a right relationship with God can enjoy the covenant agreement we have with God in the midst of our circumstances. Uh -huh. uh, I remember uh, talking to a couple who had been married for 21 years. And I knew that because we do the intake information from the beginning. I said to the couple, how long have you been married? And so we've been married 21 years. And I replied to them, no, you've been married five years. Mm -hmm. And you redid the other 16 years over and over again. Mm -hmm. You see, their relationship reached a place in which it became stuck mm -hmm. and did not move, although time moved and days went by and weeks went by and even geographical locations moved they never move. Mm -hmm. Some of us who married at 18 and 19 are still behaving like we're 18 and 19 years of age. Amen. Our relationships are unproductive, they are unwarranted, and sometimes are really deemed unnecessary and unprofitable. But yet, just to be in a relationship, we find ourselves stuck in a place while life moves on for us, for time waits for no man. Not only that, we read that uh, in psychology, that when one has experienced a traumatic situation, part of uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome is the person remains cognitively in tune with what stressor that put them in the situation in the same place. In other words, it may have been 10 years ago, but late at night or sometime through the day, they can still experience the taste of death in their mouth. Mm -hmm. They can still smell the scene of the crime. They can still find themselves uh, panicking and uh, uh, feeling like they're about to lose their mind. Why? Because they become stuck in a very crisis situation. 
in this text we find that uh, the son is just writing uh, uh, after the fall of David and, and after the fall of Korah and after many atrocities upon the Jews. Uh, yet and still the son that says we must not remain stuck in our situation. In fact, he uses the first word blessed or in the Hebrew, makirios, blessed. Uh, 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 makirios, blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Notice that he is transitioning him uh, to understand that you will be blessed if you keep moving. Uh, but when you find yourself walking in the counsel of the ungodly and standing in the way of sinners and sitting in the seat of scornfulness, eventually it will become you. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. Uh, he is admonishing them that we must not, through all the trials that we've been through, we must not forget that we are very blessed people in spite of the tragedies that we've been through. Amen. He is admonishing us. He, he's making sure that we know this morning. I don't know about you, but, but in spite of all the stuff that I've been through, I still have joy. In spite of the stuff that I've been through, I have victory in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I know you look at me sometimes and say, it looked like you're struggling, it looked like you're going through something, but I didn't stop in my problems. I didn't become stuck around uh, stubborn people. Y'all ought to say amen. Let's look at some of the people, and, 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 and let me help you with this. Uh, 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 he, he, he paints a picture of a man that's blessed, but he's surrounded by folk that's in a mess. Listen to the first one he's around with. It blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly. Uh -huh. Some of you have been around folk who have about two pieces of God in them, and you walk around wondering why you talk like a devil, walk like a devil, and act like a devil. You should have kept moving. There's some folk you met, you should have walked right on by as soon as they opened their mouth, and you realize what kind of nut they were. Y'all ought to say amen. And the first thing you say when you walk up to a person, you say, well, he said something crazy. You want to stop and spend some time on a nut. Y'all ought to say amen. But if you would have been blessed to have kept moving from an ungodly person. Because if you stay there and you talk to that ungodly person, before you know it, you'll stand with that ungodly person. Y'all ought to say amen. When I meet folk, I ain't looking for nobody perfect, but I don't know what you're about. What do you stand for? And he stands for some food. There's a couple in Georgia. They, they're calling me and they want me to come to Georgia and talk with them, but they are, they've left the church of Christ. And they've gone to uh, the house of Israel. Uh, this new religion is out here too. Uh, the, 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 the house of Israel, whose platform is built upon. Now listen to this. That the black man is the original man. Oh. And that all salvation coming through the black man. Blast is the man who standeth not in the council of the ungodly. God has never been about the outside of a person. Yeah. But God looks on the the yeah. inside of a person and, and, and God don't save folk because they're black or white God save folk because they're right yeah. with him y'all ought to say amen yeah. he saved because they're right with him they're in a right relationship with him uh, and so when he says blessed it is not I want you to get this I want you to see this when he says blessed is the man who walking not in the kind of ungodliness it is not talking about an emotion it's, called, it's talking about a disposition mm -hmm. let me say that again maybe that's right Where's muscle man? Muscle man, you with me? When God said muscle man. <laughs> <laughs> muscle man. When God says blessed is the man who walking not in the council of ungodly, you ought to make sure talking about your emotions. God, God is not a man that he should not know the son of man that he should repent. When God says him, in other words, God's the same today. Yes, he's not an emotional God. But he also is not a God to the dead. He's a God of the living. When he uses the word blessed, he is referring to a disposition in spite of your proposition. He is referring to that when I come into the house of God and I'm looking for blessed folk, your disposition ought to be able to shout that old song after all the things that I've been through, Amen. I still mm, have joy. Yes. After all the hell that I've been through, I still have joy. Amen. After all the heartaches and the pain, Thank you. I still have joy. Amen. The ungodly finds his joy outside of the relationship. Mm -hmm. But it is only temporary. 
2 Corinthians chapter 4, around the 17th verse. For if our outward men were repairs, we are renewed with the inward men day by day for our situations, our trials are but for a moment which worketh in us a better and a higher way to glory with God. And though the outward man perish, just know you still blessed because there's something inside of you. Amen. That knows that everything is going to be all right. When folk are laughing and telling you something inside of you, no, God not through with the situation yet. Yeah. When the devil telling you don't give God praise, something inside of you stands up and shout, I got to praise him. I got to give him glory. Blessed is his name. He says, a mercurios. Not only does the word bless mean joy, but bless also means gratitude. Nehemiah chapter 8. Verse number 10, Bible says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What do you mean the joy of the Lord is your strength? There are sometimes the external me is not very happy, but rest assured on the inside. Because I know God loves me. I'm fired up on the inside. Even sometimes when I'm preaching, trying to teach God's word, I'm struggling emotionally with what I'm doing. But on the inside, God Kept the light on. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. You see, the, when you have that blessedness, the mercurials, it is not on the outside. It's a disposition inside of you that won't allow foolishness to take over you. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse number 17, we find the gratefulness of God. He says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Now listen to this. Uh, in everything, whether you're up or whether you're down, in everything, in everything, Amen. whether things are good, whether things are bad, whether folk are with you, whether folk are against you, in everything, give thanks to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now watch this, because this is the will of God concerning you. Mm -hmm. When you get in trouble, uh -huh. thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. When you're broke, uh -huh. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. When you're hungry, uh -huh. thank you, Jesus. And some of you need to learn to thank Jesus when you eat. Y'all ought to say amen. I sometimes sit back and watch a joker just grease down on God's pork chops and eat on God's yams and smack on God's cornbread and lick on God's greens and bite God's turkey leg and suck up God's Kool-Aid and too proud to say thank you, Jesus. Y'all ought to be grateful for that. You ought to be grateful because you didn't have to eat that meal. Y'all ought to say amen. He said, what I need to know is that you have a spirit in you. I need you to hear this. Because I'm dealing with the disposition of the text. The disposition of the text is not dealing with the emotion of the text. The problem with false doctrine and false teachers, they're always thinking that blessings have something to do with getting something. Actually, you bless with your house with the Spirit of God, and if you don't get nothing else, you still can shout and say thank you, Jesus. I remember visiting the Church of God in Christ in Georgia. Minding my own business, I was actually selling insurance. And almost, if you know me, I sell my policies. And I went in there and I was waiting on this. Uh, Baptist, well, no, I'm sorry, uh, the Church of God in Christ, whatever he was, they have so many titles, and I was sitting there waiting, and he got up and told the people, God told me, uh, y'all gonna bless me with a car. And I don't know what it's going to everybody bring their keys up to the front and set them down. I was sitting there, and I had my leg crossed. <laughs> I'm a Church of Christ preacher, I had my leg crossed, and he looked back and said, Pastor, I need you to come down and set your keys. Down here, now, I drove a, a 600 Mercedes Benz. <laughs> Amen. And then he said, set my Mercedes Benz keys. So he can get a, he can get a blessing. And I looked at him in front of the floor. I said, God didn't tell me what he told you. And I said, keep your keys. I knew that the blessing not on the outside. Uh, because God is not temporary blessing. Remember, the blessings on the outside are what? Temporary. temporary. I don't care. And, and that's why it's important, church. You hear me this. It's important that you be happy on the inside. Amen. It's important that you be happy in the fire that's in you. It's important that you know how much you mean to God. Because if you don't, or you're not happy on the inside, Bobby or Smith or Johnny can take your happiness Amen. from you. Uh, uh, Susie, Kim, uh, Patricia can take your happiness from you. Uh, problems can rob you of your happiness. Uh, people can stomp on your happiness. But I've sung a song when 
day. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world sure enough can't take it away. You're not the reason I smile. I smile because I'm happy. I, I, I get up and I look and I smile and I grin because I'm happy because he makes me feel good. Yeah. I say it then. There's nothing worse than being around a miserable, cantankerous, speck of life, buffalo face, sweet nose, slew footed, mad, angry person every day of the week. You ought to be happy God woke you up. You, ought, you know he shouldn't have woke you up. If anybody's surprised when you wake up in the morning, you ought to be surprised he woke you up. Y'all ought to say amen. Amen. Everybody Google yourself. So, so you learn your new Hebrew word. And remember, when they lie about scripture, uh, uh, when you're in the Old Testament, uh, if they say they're using Greek, they will lie the truth ain't never. Unless it may be in the first five books of the Bible, the Septuagint. But when you're in Psalms, it has to be Hebrew. And the Greek word for it is makarios, which means happy. Which means grateful. It also means job well done. But in this text, its content is pulled into a disposition and not a what? Not an emotion. All right. All right. So then we read the Bible and say in Proverbs 3 and verse number 13 Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. He's saying, Mercurios is the man that findeth wisdom. When you read in uh, for, uh, for Isaiah 12 and verse number 3, the Bible says, Therefore you shall draw water out of your well of Mercurios. Uh, of salvation. In other words, you'll get strength in the trials of your tribulation just knowing that if you die, you saved. Amen. I don't care what you're going through. You know that for sure God has secured your salvation. Isaiah said there is joy in knowing if nothing else happens in this world, you've accomplished one thing, and that is if you die tonight, you can be a child of God. And you got to be happy that you can see heaven. Happy you can be with Paul. Happy you can be with Peter. Happy you can see Jesus. Happy to hear, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. You wasn't perfect. Come on up a little higher and I'll make you ruler over many. You can't take my happiness. Amen. 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 But if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of the terror of 1 Peter 3 and verse number 14. Well then, preacher, you have... Uh, demonstrated the disposition of the text because verse 1 is the disposition of the text comma blessed is the man who walketh not now begins the transitional part notice that first he talks about the man that walketh then he talks about the man that what standeth then he talks about the man that what sets down those are transitional movement okay, can I show you if I'm walking he said blessed is the man who does not walk after the counsel of the ungodly. Why? Because you're messing around and start what? Standing with sinners. What you mean standing with sinners? Well, any church would do. Well, you know, they worshiping Jesus just like we worshiping Jesus. We, they got the Bible just like we got the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm a Christian like you a Christian. Well, in order to get to that stand, you would have to have been with ungodly counsel. Because ungodly counsel would have told you it's okay to worship God any way you want to. Amen. Put pianos in the church. It's all right. Ah, Put them in the church. <laughs> David, Psalms 150, he had pianos in the church. You are lying. The truth is not in you. An ungodly counsel don't even know God's word. First uh -huh. Corinthians one and verse chapter one twenty one he said the spiritual things the spiritual discern and he said fool and they're foolish to to an ungodly man he can't even understand because they're spiritual discern the reason people are craving instrumental music the reason people are sitting around craving music because ungodly teachers are teaching folk to worship God just like David worship uh -huh. God uh -huh. Amen anyhow. Amen. Amen. Trench, uh, trench cockroaches, bats, bumblebees, and rattlesnakes. I know I'm right about it. Uh -huh. What does the Bible have to say about it? Well, I'm in this stage because I have ungodly counsel. Well, what's the counsel? Well, Psalms 50, Brother Hamilton. Don't you know the Bible say in the Old Testament, praise the Lord. Get Psalms 150 for me. Uh -huh. I will show you something. Psalm 149, 150, you know, praise the Lord with the instruments and stuff. And then you get from Amos chapter 6 and verse number 5. And then and someone get from Acts chapter 2. But, you know, I hope I can run through that. I just want to show you something real quickly. But I want to show you something real, real quickly because when you have ungodly counsel, they don't teach the whole counsel of God, nor do they rightly divide the word of God. And they got millions and millions of people who want to know if we got a good choir. You are the choir. Amen. And if you and as bad as you saying, that's what that's the choir. Amen. Good as you saying, that's the what? Choir. That's the choir. And if the choir ain't saying, guess who ain't saying? And we ain't got a good choir, I guess we're not a good 
choir. If the, if the choir's not singing, who's not singing? That I mean, we not because there is no choir in that sense that was brought in through Catholicism. The church must sing. The whole church must sing. It's a commandment to sing praise to God. And so he says, blessed is the man who walketh not after the uncounsel, after the counsel of the ungodly. David is saying that you need to make sure that the person that's teaching you is transitioning you out of your ungodliness into what God would have you to do Amen. in a right relationship. Amen. You got to teach you the whole truth. Amen. Well, I don't use David as a mark, and you do. The Bible says in Psalms, it's 149 and 150. Psalms 150, what does the Bible say? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament. Praise him his power. in the firmament of his power. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him in his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. His excellent greatness. I'm gonna, I want to say everything they say, but I'm not afraid of it. All right, read. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. With the, there he is, Brother Ham. He said, praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Uh -huh. All right, now, now David wrote that, didn't he? Keep reading. What else? Praise him with the psalter and heart. Get a psalter and heart. All right, read. Praise him with the temple and Praise dance. with the temple and dance. We ought to be dancing in service. <laughs> read. Praise him with the string instrument. With the string the instrument. All right, all right, all right. I'll hold it right there. Okay. Now, church, did David say that? Yes. Did yes. David teach that? Yes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Is that in your Bible? Uh -huh. Is it in all the New Testament? Oh. Oh. All right. Oh. Now, now, can I ask you a question? Did David ever do anything like that in the, in the Most High? Did David ever take instruments before God? No. Because he didn't say take this stuff into the temple, uh -huh. into the place of the most holy, because the only person that was allowed before God to worship for the children of Israel was the high priest. Okay. Was David a high priest? No. Can a king decree whatever a king wants to decree? Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar decreed every time you hear the sound of the harp, the sound of the string instrument, fall down the word, he was a king. Uh -huh. And David had reason to praise him because he had done some stuff he ought not have done. And he was not praising him before God. He couldn't go before God. He had to praise him in the outer courts of the sanctuary. Okay. When it was time for worship, true worship, holy worship, the priest went in with his robe on. He was decorated with the epoch. He had a rope wrapped around it. And when God got him in front of him, he said, by finding the sin of you, I'll kill you. Mm. What was not commanded to go before God has never went before God. Do you understand there have never been an instrumental praise worship in the most holy of the holiness? Mm -hmm. Amen. I got it. To win to aimless rope. In Amos chapter, matter of fact, get for me, Acts 2, because they're following David, and they're not following Jesus. And I want Acts chapter 2, uh, around verse number 22, I believe it is. Uh, yeah, but in fact, I don't want to read it too long. Uh, but let's go to Acts 2, and uh, verse number 24, uh, uh, 25, if you don't mind. Acts 2. And for David speaks concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face. All right, read. Uh -huh, go ahead. For he is on my hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Drop down verse 29. <laughs> Man and brother. And brother. All right, read. Let me freely speak unto you. Of the patriarch, David. All right, now who wrote Psalms 150? David. David. He said, let me speak freely of the patriarch, because there's some folk worshiping like who? David. And still trying to follow who? David. David. Like there's some people still mess with Moses and David right now. They're still talking about the Old Testament. See, that's what they want is. He said, let me, brother, let me speak freely of the patriarch David. That what? What about David? That he is both dead. He is dead. And buried. He is buried. And, his and everything that he stood for went in his sepulchre. Hold on a minute. Every harp, <laughs> every tangerine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's all I said. Okay. The tambourine. <laughs> every guitar. <laughs> Everything David stood for uh -huh. is worth. Buried. And dead. What? With him. With him. Read. Therefore, therefore, now hold on a minute. Now since David's reign is over, uh -huh. 
-huh. And what David declared is over. Now, let me tell you something right now. Now, if you just got your, now, the, the ungodly and, and, and the sinners, who, who, and sinners, not person that sin, who practice sin, but the ungodly and the sinner and the scornful are sitting here right now mad, trying to act as ignorant as they want to be. Oh, boy. Because they hate truth. Mm. Mm. That's their disposition. They don't want to hear that. Why is he preaching that? Because I'm, I'm not preaching for your money. I'm trying to save your soul. Amen. Amen. I'm not concerned about I, I, By August, I said we're going to have 100 people here. You're going to help me with 100 people here. There's going to be 100 well-taught people and not ignorant people sitting up here just doing stuff and don't know why they're doing it. And if you want to go somewhere where they're jumping up there acting a fool and playing instrument and you don't read the scripture, he said, blessed is a man who does not stop. Uh, who does not walk in the counsel, uh, that, 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 that does not listen to the counsel of God, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the scornful. Have you ever talked to a person who made up their mind to go to hell? You tell them something about baptism, you tell them something about music, they got something crazy out of their mouth, no book, no chapter, no verse, no nothing, just run in their mouth, and you ought to just walk out and say, I got to keep moving. I don't want to get stopped here with you. I, gotta keep, I can't get stopped. That's what Timmy said, don't you get stopped? Well, you know, the Lord, you know, the Lord, uh, the Lord wrote the whole Bible. <laughs> you ought to tell him one time, he did. And he said in 2 Timothy 2, 15, he said, I need you to rightly divide the word of God. Uh -huh. That a workman needed not to be ashamed. Uh -huh. I, 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 what you mean, right? There's a difference in the Old Testament. In the New Testament. Amen. Don't you go in the Old Testament trying to establish New Testament worship. Amen. I died for this stuff. Uh -huh. So as soon as he makes up his mind, he don't care what the Bible says. Because most folk in church have psychological problems anyway. I'm confessing about that. That's why I'm in the business. I'm trying to get the insurance cards right now. Because I'm trying to help folk. But I'm, I'm, because, because most of the time folk that are in, in leadership in the church, something wrong, they, they, they want to stay up in front of folk, don't have the anointing of God, don't, God ain't leaving, God not pushing them, they won't study, God not using them. They just keep on, oh, sisters and brothers, I'm, I'm Deacon Smith. <laughs> I know I ain't been to church. I know, I know, I know I don't know Genesis from Psalms, but I'm Deacon Smith. By God, y'all won't listen to me. But the first thing we need to do is find a preacher. <laughs> just, 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 in you know, the back to the Bible I go. All right, I'm going to get in trouble. All right, y'all right. with me. Now, you got Amos something? What you got something? What you, what you holding? Amos 6, verse number 5. Hold your spot. You started, you started one thing, but, but five is start a couple more because I want them to feel this. And then and then and then, and then the master church is, and I'm gonna get ready to just, I'm gonna preach all this lesson. I mean ask church, and you do what you want to from there. But but if have I proven that David wrote something? Yes. yes. Have I proven that David has not took those instruments in before God? Yes. yes. Okay. Have I proven in the New Testament, at least on the day of Pentecost? Uh, there was a sermon that was preached on the day of Pentecost where Peter declared, Men and brother, let me speak freely of the patriotic David, that he is both dead and buried. His sepulchre is here with you this day. He goes on to say in the next verse uh, that you have taken Jesus, the Son of God, and crucified him with wicked hands.